When I was a kid, I used to love asking my mom one question over and over again. Please, tell me a story of when you were little. Even at a young age, I knew how different my life was in comparison to the 1940s of my mom's childhood. Refugees of war, my mom and her large family of eight grew up extraordinarily poor in Taiwan. There's just something about those stories she would tell me that I felt were so different from the life I knew. But my favorite story was of how her own mother knitted together her own favorite sweater. But not having enough money to buy brand new clothes each time my mom outgrew it, my, uh, my, my grandmother would actually take that sweater, unravel it, add a bit of old or new yarn to create an entirely new sweater that we, to create an entirely new sweater for my mom. My grandmother did this to that sweater for six years, ultimately becoming a pair of quite colorful pants that we have today. So every time my mom told me this story, I noticed she would do the same thing over and over again. Afterwards, she would take my hands, she would sit up real straight, and she'd look me straight in the eyes, and she would say, so, Dong Dong, my very embarrassing childhood nickname, always truly appreciate what you have. I like to think that I followed my mom's life lesson. I don't take things for granted. I'm always very appreciative of the people in my life. In college, after this random factory tour, I decided to create my own major to focus on creating better working conditions and environmental sustainability for apparel and footwear factories. I even worked in Asia for four years afterwards doing just that. But three years ago, I decided to move back to the US to start business school. My first stop was to visit my childhood home. I wanted to see my mom, I wanted to see my dad, but I had finally mustered the courage to do something that I'm pretty sure we all hate doing cleaning out our childhood closet. <laughs> and what I saw stunned me. I opened my closet door to see hangers and hangers of clothes, some with even the store tag still attached. Stuffed boxes lined the shelves, some with even my sixth grade handwriting on it that said, clothes to wear when skinnier, clothes to wear when fatter, and clothes to redesign. I must have stood in front of this closet for a full five minutes just silently staring at this abyss of fabric. All along, I realized, I had not been following my mom's life lesson. It got me thinking. Over the years, I had actually been appreciating having clothes. It's just I had not appreciated having each piece of clothing. My excessive consumption, where the ease of buying brand new clothes or even secondhand clothes had become a mindless decision, a habit, really. Now, this isn't just a sign of what money can do for your closet. After all, as one clothing company recently advertised on the New York City subway, money can't buy you love, but $8 can buy you some cute clothes. <laughs> My closet full of brand new and perfectly rewearable clothes was a sign of the times. A sign of the times when $8 represents the ability for us to buy one piece of brand new fast fashion once every week. When $8 represents the ability that you can afford to wear something once and promptly forget about it. Throw it away even because next week you'll find something for just as cheap and just the same. When $8 represents the fact that you'll most probably actually end up wearing the same exact outfit as a person sitting next to you on that very subway car. Now, this $8 actually also represents something even grander. Even an $8 t-shirt takes 2,700 liters of water to manufacture. That's how much water you each drink in three years. Three years. Now, perhaps closer to home for us, whether we identify as fashionistas or simply consumers of clothes, are the people behind these $8 outfits. This culture of fast fashion has somehow permitted us to forget who designed these outfits and how. Whatever happened to appreciating the craftsmanship of fashion design? How can we say that we truly love fashion if we don't even know who made it and how? So what's the alternative? I found that the average American woman spends $3,400 a year on brand new clothes, 
but 80% of that is completely wasted and sitting unused in her closet. Why? Well, maybe she bought that denim jacket when it was so in season last year, but now it's just a fashion faux pas. Maybe your favorite skirt, the zipper is broken and you can't bring yourself to fix it. Or like many of us here, we are secretly cherishing our mother's 1970s vintage dress, but we just wish we could somehow modernize it so we can have the courage to wear it on the streets. And as I'm sure we're all familiar with, we have those highly questionable outfits that we bought on a whim just because it was 40% off. And guys, don't think, I don't see you rolling your eyes back there. I know you know that all these scenarios apply to you as well. So what am I getting at? We all need to stop buying clothes. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That would be absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Actually, the solution is far simpler than that. By making small changes, we can have a large impact. And that's exactly why I decided to start my own company, Thimble. It's a website and app that connects us to a whole new generation of gifted tailors and designers. I got to thinking that of all the clothes sitting in our closets right now, so just imagine that, there's so much potential for brand new designs. So with Thimble connecting us to previously underutilized talent, including fashion design students, independent designers, and even hobbyists, we can actually use those clothes that we bought and saved for a reason. By extending the life of your clothes by even eight, sorry, by nine months, you are decreasing the energy, water, and waste footprints by 20 to 30% each. And on top of that, you're not only empowering local talent and the local community, but you're maximizing your original purchase, you're resizing clothes to fit your current size, and you're redesigning a look that is uniquely your own. It's by Felicia, or by Felipe, to all those embarrassing moments of wearing the same exact outfit as two others at a wedding. Unfortunately, a true story. The cusp of the fast fashion phase is nearing. And I invite you to join me at the forefront of slowing down this fast fashion. It's high time that we truly appreciate style while also appreciating the people behind these clothes and how they're made and what they're made of. After all, my mom, our parents, all brought us into this world for a reason, to leave the world in a better place. Let's make them proud. <laughs>